Welcome. I'm glad you could join PCR Planet. And today I'm delighted to welcome to our program, Dr. Antoinette Nealon. Dr. Nealon is originally from Ireland, but she has joined the team in, in Massy, Paris, France. And we are also welcoming Dr. José Luis Leva Pons, who's working in uh, Mexico, actually in a city called St. Louis, St. Louis. Welcome to both of you. And let's start with uh, Antoinette. So I can see that you are in, in, uh, in scrubs. So has the activity in the cath lab uh, started again in uh, Massy? Um, yes, William. Um, today in France marks the first day of the confinement. So uh, it also marks the, um, the beginning of um, some programmed activity for us here in the hospital. Um, so we're slowly coming back to, to life um, and we are now able to program some cases um, which we hadn't been since, since mid-March when all this started here. Oh yeah. So, I mean, for you it must have been quite a, a change uh, complicated by a challenge because you just moved to new country, new city, new hospital, new team and, and there comes COVID. So yes. how, how did you experience this? Yeah, um, I started working here just uh, one year ago now and um, certainly it's it's been uh, it's been challenging. Um, our confinement started here in in mid March, and that certainly would have made any travel home for me almost impossible. And on a professional level, um, once the virus started to take hold and our activity started to stop, um, I almost you find yourself almost unemployed because. Uh, we have very little programmed activity, and we were just running a, an on-call emergency service. Mm -hmm. Well, let me turn to uh, Dr. Leva Pons, uh, Jose Luis. Um, are you in the same situation, or have you gone through the peak of the epidemic already? How is the situation in your hospital, in your city? Thank you very much, Professor Wins. It's a great pleasure to be sharing with you what is happening in Mexico. And to begin, I would like to tell you, I live in San Luis Potosí, which is north from Mexico City, and things here have been uh, very calm, I would say. We're, we have been expecting the peak of the curve, but the, case, the cases have not increased as much as we thought it was going to happen. So uh, we are just seeing uh, emergency cases. We continue to do a, a primary PCI for uh, acute MI, but we are not doing any elective cases. Uh, I'm just some call if they need me at the hospital, I go there. And uh, that's how it is happening in San Luis Potosí. Things are very yeah. different in Mexico City. Oh, you mean in the large, I mean, your town is something like, you told me one million and a half, and this is uh, 10 times less than Mexico City. So I, uh, or even, even Mexico is maybe 20 million people, right? And uh, what is happening in Mexico City is that the, all, all the great hospitals like the National Institute of, of Cardiology has become, uh, has become a COVID-19 hospital. Mm -hmm. so, so they are accepting, obviously they are accepting uh, patients with heart problems but are mainly uh, taking care of patients with COVID-19. So Mexico City is completely different. The, all the hospitals from the public hospitals and the social security hospitals are packed. They are actually doing some temporary hospitals to, to take care of the COVID-19 patients. So the, the thing in Mexico is, is dramatical and we, uh, we, we believe that the peak of the curve also has not arrived yet. Mm -hmm. So at least you have the time to, to get prepared and implement um, the care pathways, the personal protection, I mean, everything we hear about that needs to be implemented to be able to, uh, to, treat, to treat safely um, the patients who come in. Yes. 
That, that is true. Actually, uh, social distancing started at the beginning of March, which means almost two months and a half of being prepared. So the hospitals are prepared and uh, uh, people is trained to have good uh, personal protection. And, you know, it's been published with, uh, with all the people to, to take care. The problem now is that people who stay at home is getting tired and they're getting nervous. And they want to go out already. So I don't know. It's not the moment things can become worse uh, one of these days. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's interesting when you do these interviews to realize how different areas uh, in the world, but also within the country sometimes, are at different stages. So coming back to you, Antoinette, you said that for, for a while, since March, you basically had no, no or very few patients in the cath lab for the entire team. So what did you do? Did you stay home and study? or? <laughs> I, I think it's, um, I would, our hospital became a, a COVID hospital. At the beginning, I wasn't really sure because just it was at the planning stage and we had a, it was a quick run into this. And all of a sudden, in our region, around the region of Versailles, there were the sort of cases of cases, and our hospital became a COVID hospital. And um, we opened a COVID ward here. Um, we had over 40 patients ventilated with COVID at the peak, and had a medical ward that was opened with uh, 38 patients. So I volunteered to work on the on the COVID ward because, from the cardiology side of things things were really very, very quiet. It was just emergencies. And we all wondered where the semis and where the where the infarcts had gone to because they certainly weren't turning up at our door anymore. And whether that was because people were afraid to to signal their symptoms because there was such a, a fear out there, particularly in the beginning in the beginning of March and mid March, there was there was such a fear among among the public. Or just the fact that people were confined and not moving and their symptoms were, were, were a little bit masked by the by, by physical inactivity. It was a little bit strange. Um, but certainly it was a it was a challenge learning medicine again after fifteen years. <laughs> so have you that's very generous, first of all, of you. And uh, what what have you seen that you you know, clinical presentations or situations that you were not used to or exceptional cases that, you, that you've encountered or treated? Well, certain, just from the medical side, like, you know, coming from Ireland, being a, an English speaker, getting to, to know the system here, the drugs here, they're a little bit different from what we're used to at home as well. Um, and from the, just, I, even from, from, from medicine, it's been 15 years since I, I practiced medicine on the wards and just getting back to grips with the dose of antibiotics and how to order an ABG, very simple things because this is a private hospital. We don't have that tiered system of juniors up to seniors. So it's the senior who's in charge of everything. So you're doing the blood gas, you're charging the medications, you're you know, charting the power piece of all, you're doing all these things. So uh, it really was back to basics for me, which was, was which was, was really good because I worked with a wonderful team of people who were so helpful and everybody got so involved. Um, uh, so we, we saw a lot of myocarditis um, uh, with, with COVID. We saw um, in, in young patients, we've quite a few nice cases of, of acute myocarditis associated with, with COVID. Uh, that was, was very interesting. Yeah. Colleagues have shown some of these cases and, and reported them with ECGs masquerading STEMI and in fact normal coronaries or and, and troponin levels sky high. Yeah, um, absolutely. Um, and it, it again poses a problem when those patients are directly taken to the cath lab and potentially expose um, staff to the virus. Um, and sometimes it only becomes apparent afterwards that they're actually COVID positive because they may not have any of the other typical symptoms. A lot of them didn't have the fever and the cough. They maybe had some 
you know, niggling chest pain. And um, when they had the PCR done later, it turns out that they're positive. So that huge poses a big logistical problem for the hospital and the people who came into contact with them. But um, certainly um, we saw young patients as young as 18 um, with a rejection fraction of 30% and acute myocarditis, um, COVID-related. So the, a whole spectrum of it. Thank you. And uh, Jose Luis, for yourself, we understand that um, activity is low, but that you're you know, prepared to face what might happen. Hopefully you'll be spared a massive overflow of patients. So how do you envisage, you know, going back to more elective or normal activity, or do you think it's, it's too early to make any plans? No, I think that for us here in San Luis, uh, it's too early to, to go back to, to our regular uh, practice. I think we have to go little by little and be prepared because I think the, the curve is still rising and we are expected to have more and more cases every day. But I, want, I wanted to say two, two things. The first one is as a clinician, because I also see cardiology patients, we are seeing a lot of healthy young men with palpitation and shortness, shortness of breath. You know, people being afraid of getting sick of COVID-19, you know, this is probably the reason, you know, because they stay at home and they are afraid of, of getting sick, so they go, they go to the hospital and they have nothing. So that is one thing. And the second thing anxiety. is that because of COVID-19, anxiety, a lot of anxiety yeah. in, the, in the society, actually. And the other side is, are those patients that uh, come to the hospitals and because doctors believe they have COVID-19, we are missing important diagnosis. You know, people coming and, you know, people believe this is COVID-19. So we miss the, the other regular diagnosis of the regular medicine that continue to be good clinicians in order to continue to keep good treatment to our patients. Mm -hmm. So you must have quite a backlog of patients, elective procedures that were planned and patients are waiting? Yes, we have a, an important list and uh, we at the beginning we called them to tell them that we were closed until May and then we are you know, calling back to tell them that not until mid of June probably we will restart our regular practice. So the outpatient clinic, for example, is closed. In order to avoid having a, a crowd getting together and with the risk of infecting each other. So the outpatient clinic is closed, the elective cases are postponed, so we are still taking a lot of, a lot of care because we don't know exactly what's gonna happen. Yeah, this is really a, a paradoxical situation because of course everything is done to, to take care of the COVID plus patients, but at the same time in doing so, we're leaving out uh, many other patients who um, have to wait. Perhaps some of them um, suffer from, you know, not just mobility, but also some mortality because they're not being taken care of uh, because all the priorities, so to speak, are shifted to, uh, to the treatment of COVID. And in one way or the other, we will have to, uh, to address this. So thank you very much for, for joining uh, uh, PCR Planet and give, giving us uh, news from, from, from you in St. Louis uh, and, and from Paris. So maybe to close this uh, conversation, I'd like to give uh, uh, both of you the word for a final uh, comment or, or statement that you would like to share with us. Uh, Jose Luis first. Um, I, uh, certainly, I think. Thank you, but it's been a, it's been a great pressure. <laughs> it's been it's been a it's been a great pleasure, and I think it's get a good moment for us uh, cardiologists uh, all over the world to remain strong, to remain together and stay home. And thank you very much. Thank you. Antoinette. Um, I'd just like to say it was great to talk to you both. Um, and that I just 
think that this has particularly shown how in times of crisis people are so willing to give and so willing to help and so willing to come together when I see just my own experience here of the hospital and how everybody just just freely and so willingly gave their time up to go and work on the ward. I think it just affirms um, that, you know, people are good and, you know, um, we all did medicine for the right reason. And that's the, um, at the heart of it all is the patient. And that's, it's, it's just, it's been, uh, you have to find a positive even in the darkest, uh, at the darkest moment. And that's been it certainly for me. Thank you so much for these uh, strong, strong words uh, of generosity and um, getting uh, us all together. Thank you very much. And uh, to all of you, uh, stay safe.